happens to uh, change your mentality, right? Yeah, man, sure. that is a reach. That is a reach. <laughs> oh man, that's how we're opening this. I'm just, uh, I'm oh. just gonna drink this beer. So what we're gonna, what we're talking about tonight is we're gonna talk about what everyone thinks happens when you get high, and we're gonna go around the table and we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna see how long everyone is. <laughs> well, I would like to say that I do not partake in that. If anyone is listening, uh, well, that's why we want to hear what you think happens. So that'll be the best one. Uh, well, we, uh, we have a document this evening. We have, look at that, even insert marijuana joke here, it's in the document. See? I'm mm-hmm. doing it. Right. I'm going down the list. I skipped some shit, you did. though. You did. Donald's really been out drinking. I work so hard on these, and you, you, you work like, hard you always my skip. ass. You've been out drinking. He fucking texts us I can work like hard and then drink. O'clock. He's like, oh, I'm out drinking. Well, so it's probably best that you it's did put President's it Day. It's President's Day. Which presidents did we, you ac- choose? Actually, them? my fiance and I had a wedding site tour, and then after that, we we're like, you know what? You know what sounds good? Alcohol. Wait, when did you guys get engaged? Uh, a couple weeks ago. I. All right. Congrats, I guess. Congrats, buddy. <laughs> Woo! Surprise! Yeah, surprise. That I know. He, he didn't I do it on the podcast remember. like some of us. Yeah, I, I didn't do it on the podcast. Well, it's not my podcast. It's your podcast, and that's an appropriate venue for avenue for your engagement proposal. That's fair. But uh, for me, I had to do a little different. All right. Well, let's talk. Let, you know what? First things first. Uh, starting with probably next week or not this next week rather starting with Wednesday I'm going to start reading off your iTunes review so if you have one get it in now because we want to hear about uh, what you have to say about the show you can call us a bunch of flaming idiots if you'd like and we are okay with that as long as it's accurate yes yeah exactly I've been called worse than that (laughs) so yeah please go leave your uh, iTunes reviews out there and now we're going to jump right in and talk about League of Legends so Sean you're the man of the hour this evening because you and I so how this is going to start, we're going to talk about mentality this evening because I, I'll i probably say about a month, maybe two months ago, Sean texts me, or I'm texting Sean probably about a game or some shit that happened, and, and he starts going off on me, right, and telling me, you know, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, and I, and I started thinking about it after a while, and I went, you know what, I think he's right, and it's it's a hard mentality to break what we're going to talk about, but I, I, want, I want Sean I to want just to do it. I want to frame this in a way where I get to start by talking shit about a good friend of mine, <laughs> and that <laughs> that is the highlight of every great story. Um. Basically, there are certain things that people do in games that, for whatever reason, uh, it's either a defensive mechanism for them dealing with some sort of misplay, or it's a way to sort of like deflect maybe things that they should probably work on. And uh, I don't, I, I can't say exactly how it started, but I think it just got. To the point where I got so sick of being in games where you were laning against a Thresh that I had to talk to you about it. <laughs> so, like, I'm going to use oh. the Thresh example uh, to start things off. Adam, why is it when you're in lane, you get surprised if a Thresh hook hits you? Because... Because thresh hook is so coated, it's like fucking spaghetti like that sometimes thresh hooks just hit you. And then you're like, oh shit. No, I'll tell you the real truth. The real truth is because uh, when I'm laning and I'm looking at the enemy minions, I forget that the thresh hook can go through the enemy minions and hit me. So sometimes I'm like, all right, well, I'm good because I'm standing in, you know, and behind these minions or whatever. This minion is in my way, but I, the color doesn't, you know how it is. Like the colors sometimes get blurred together okay. and don't register in your head. So sometimes the thresh hook goes through a minion and hits you. Or it, it, it uh, all right. you know, this it matrixes you. This Holy is a much shit. better explanation than what we probably talked about the day that I brought this up to you. Uh, that still does not give you a pass at all for <laughs> the amount of surprise that that happens if something hits you. Uh, and this goes for a lot of people. I would actually say this goes for probably I, I would say most players. I, I would say most players, for whatever reason, um, they get to a point where they're laning and something happens, and for whatever reason, they get surprised at the fact that some ability hit them or that the enemy laner did something that was good, that was helpful to the enemy team in order to get a kill or something like that. But why the fuck is it surprising if you've played this game for any period of time, if you've play, been playing ranked at all, if you've, you've done anything at all, and I love using the Thresh example because I swear people just get so tilted at the fact Morgana that... Morgana binding. Is M- Morgana can that, work. That's mine. Let's crank. <laughs> like, <laughs> any... Honestly, it can be it could be any skill shot that you don't expect is going to hit you if it hit when it hits you. Why are you surprised at it? 
Like, what what is the main reason that you are so shocked that there is something in the game that is meant to do exactly what it does to you, and it I mean, I mean, fucking and, hits you. What, and what and is beyond the surprise that, for this? It's like, why are you shocked that the opponent who is trying to do his or her job is able to right, do to that do their job. job and like right. manage to do that? Are you so good at this game? That no, just by virtue of you being in it, they shouldn't be able to do their job and do the things that they are trying to do. Uh, I have a, I think I have a pretty easy answer for this. It's yes. that for the, for a very long time, and it doesn't, it doesn't like change. The mentality of this doesn't change in in humans in general till you start to get to like twenties when you start realizing that oh, maybe things are my fault sometimes. Actions that just happens in real life. <laughs> and and people don't like to accept when they've done something wrong. It happens to everybody. That's mm -hmm. that's natural. But when you have something like League of Legends, where not only could you, if you're recording yourself, go back and see, it's sometimes just easier to say, well, that I don't I don't know how that could have hit me. Like that that that's clearly bullshit. And then if you went back and actually watched it, you'd probably find out that 99 times out of 100, you would, it was you would probably sit there your thinking, fault. You did Why something am I wrong. positioning like this? Why did yeah, I go right. to to harass it this time when I knew X cooldown wasn't down. Why did I do whatever reason? So this kind of flips everything to this certain point where look at the game. There are tons of champions in the game. You might not know exactly what every single one of them does, but if you've been playing for any significant amount of time, you probably have a good idea of most of the things that popular champions do. And this is kind of like my call out or talking shit or whatever you want to say to anybody who gets upset when something happens to work out for an enemy player that you, you, you for whatever reason don't understand or necessarily respect that like that hook landed or something else happened when it comes down to it that happened probably because you did something to screw up whether you positioned wrong whether you chose the wrong time to trade whether um, you ended up like not paying attention while one of your teammates backs up and you move a little bit too far forward. So I guess this is just like a big conversation of, hey, you're not the only person in the game that you're in. The enemy team is trying to beat you, doing the exact same things to you that you're trying to do to them. Can we take a minute to like reflect on the fact that when something happens and it's surprising, that it's probably your fault. And I think that's the worst part about having this mentality is if something surprises you when you have this 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 deflection mentality, like, oh, that shouldn't have happened, then you're busy focusing on that instead of focusing on what you did wrong, mm -hmm. which means you're probably going to make well, that same mistake again. And then it snowballs easy. against you. It's so easy to be surprised and be like, well, that shouldn't have hit me or like that shouldn't have happened or whatever. But that's like that's not helpful when you're trying to to learn how to play the game better, when you're trying to, you know, learn how to lane better, when you're trying to do anything in this game in a, in a way to improve. This should so, not be a situation where like I where you just decide that it is bonkers that something worked out. This is like the moment where you have to figure out why did it work out and how can you change things to not have that happen in the future? Or how can you do that yourself to the enemy? There another, are... Go ahead. I was, I was going to say another big example of this, not just skill shots, but is um, getting ganked in a solo lane. Like, you, you go aggressive on your lane opponent and as soon as you do, the jungler shows up. And the common reaction is, of course the jungler's there. Of course he was waiting there. How long are you waiting there, jungler? Huh? How long are you sitting in that bush? But in, so then you die, you come back to lane, and you fall for the same exact gank because you just rush into it and you go, "Oh my god, I can't believe he was still there again." How many times does this happen to solo laners, right? And, and like that's such an easy thing to correct too. Like, like, like honestly, instead of saying, "Oh, of course the jungler is there," really all you gotta say is, "I did not expect the jungler to be there." Why didn't I and ward? Then you, that, yeah, all right. Why didn't all right. I how, ward? Many how many wards do I have? How or, many times are you in games with me where something bad happens? Like, oh, I fucked up. I yeah. fucked up so bad. I do bad. that too. I'm like, oh yeah. shit, I fucked up so bad. But it's 100% okay, yeah. of games with you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> holy shit, turns out there was somebody right there. I, I was not prepared for that. Like, even just going to ward, all of a sudden, hey, they are in that bush, guys. Guys, they're Found right them. there. 
Somebody I've remind also... me to send this podcast to Weldon after the fact and mm-hmm. ask him to listen to it to see if he'd come on and have a follow-up conversation based on what we are talking about because I'd really like to get his input on a lot of this and how they treat this from like the pro perspective because uh, it's not that he's working with uh, Caps, right? Caps is the baby faker, air quotes. Did I get the – I'm assuming that's the name. Yeah, Anybody? yeah, that's Thank you. I can't. I don't watch enough LCS to really know, but like you've got people who are so on their high horse that they feel like you know that that they're immune to anything and whatnot. Or they're and, above and, whatever. Yeah, they're yeah. above the threshold. They above criticism, above mechanical failure, above whatever. So above making mistakes. I'm really curious how a professional would go about correcting this with it, you know, uh, with other professionals or, or professional athletes. I mean, I would I would think that a piece of this has to go with the the point where those people all know that they're playing against people who are relatively pretty good at the game. So instead of looking at it like, oh, that's a surprising situation that this happened, it's like, well, I expect X to happen. I expect somebody to try something, and I expect when they do it that it might land, but what do I need to do in order to maneuver to not allow that to happen? You know what they never that's, expect? The flanking wild turtle. Well, that's because that dude's <laughs> super chaotic effective. that you never know. Now, the the <laughs> that, thing that the pros have is they have they have, they watch game film. That's in any sports and in League of Legends. Like all you have to do is you can go frame by frame and easily see like you shouldn't have clicked here, and it could be such a minuscule like you said, Chira, just I mean, getting a little bit out of position. But you can tell from frame by frame like. Yep, that's where we messed up. Shouldn't be doing that. We have replays now, though. You can go back and look at your performance. And even like if you just look at laning phase, you can go back and say, okay, I was doing this. And this is what telegraphed my behavior to the opponent with the hook. And that is what I what actually caused me to get, um, you know, to get snared right there. And that's why we like that's why every the, the fallout happened and everything. It wasn't that the the script is broken. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. There are edge cases. A- Adam linked a pretty good one uh, on Twitter oh, that, that, uh, that, last the, week. The blitzcrank right. hook. Yeah, the yeah, blitzcrank hook. I mean, hook there are that... definitely some edge cases out there, but you shouldn't assume that every time you get hit by a skill shot, it's an edge case. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, odds I've... are good that that things were working the way that they were supposed to. Yeah, I think if you do end up starting to take uh, advantage of of replays, be it through our services or just on your own, like. That also requires that 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 shift of mentality to say, I'm going to improve myself by looking at what I'm bad at. It's very right. fun to go back and look at replay reviews where you kicked ass, but it might not really give you a whole lot of benefit because you're, you're not trying to win harder. You're trying to win the games that you lost or win the lane that you lost. Even like that, there's so many things you can get from just watching a couple of your games back. And yeah, on, I mean, honestly, like if you just start that, you're you're already way ahead of a, pretty much, I'd say, 90 percent of people in the game. If watching wins is really only going to be useful if you are trying to compare it against a similar set of circumstances, but you lost instead because you're trying to figure out what you did or might have done or could have done to um, reverse the fortune in the in the, the losing game. And you have evidence of a successful game where you did things right and everything. So you can understand and just have the the right mentality, checklist, all of the things that you need to have, you know, going forward and everything. And you're not going to be able to replicate the same results like game after game after game. You know, that like right. I, I was saying we played a, ga- a couple games a few weeks ago and I was just like, God, I felt like I was fucking locked in there. Why can't I do that every single game? And Adam just goes, because because it's impossible. Like you just can't do that. Isn't there a, I, I know I've seen on some streams, I think Sneaky's the one that kind of, I, I remember specifically seeing, where there's a, there's an app or something that you can install that allows you to, like, hit a button and a second screen will pop up that'll replay the last, like, 10 seconds of your game. So, you like, after a, a death, if you wanted to see very quickly, like, it, without having go to go back and, and go through a replay review, you can just have something like that. I do not know the program, but I know that it exists. So that would be a, a smaller way of doing it, but it could be very <laughs> instantaneous. Uh, if you're feeling really, if you want to feel, it's, I guess, better about the death, it's or a worse, way to reflect really sure. during the death screen, so you're just not sitting there seething. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. what happened? Can I, can I, can I figure out from this clip what went wrong? Well, I mean, it gives you something productive to do while there's a little bit of downtime. I mean, like, if you're me and Adam and you're doing replay reviews, we'd love it if you were paying attention to team fights after you died, so we could see how things <laughs> go. But. Uh, <laughs> right <laughs> that's more of a that's a personal preference for us <laughs> well there's I mean, that's uh there's a piece that, when you're looking at 
we're just gonna talk. I guess we're talking replay reviews at this point. Like, if you decide to go back and look at one of your re reviews and you, and you look at a winning game, you can use winning games to get better. Because I know that I've looked at plenty of replay reviews of winning games where, but the good ones to pick are like the ones where you don't feel like you really did anything, but the rest of your team carried you. So then you go back and you look. Why did I get carried this game? What did I do incorrectly? Or and what did your teammates do right? Yeah, that too. So you can go back and look and go, you know, and, and tell yourself. But like, just to swing back around for just a second to the to the over overarching point about getting hit by a thresh hook, the something that I've been trying really hard to do, and it's I will say it's really really hard to do, is change the mentality from "Oh my god, I got fucking hit" to "Okay, I got hit." How do I not get hit next time that I'm standing there? What went wrong in this situation? That's probably where I need Mitch's replay thing. You know, like the, the, the 10 second thing right. to pop up and go, oh, fuck, you're right. I was out of position. Or, oh, shit, I did step a, a one one pixel too far ahead. I think I think another piece of this, too, is um, I think for whatever reason, no matter what rank that you're in, everybody who plays ranked probably thinks that in some way or another they're they're good at the game. And, you know, that's probably relatively varying levels of true. And I'm not shitting on anyone who's lower ranking or whatever. But, like, if you're playing a lot of ranked and you're trying to improve and you do notice that you're improving, that's great. But I think that everybody needs to have a healthy respect for whoever they're playing in a game against um, like there are certain situations where you are going to be able to go, you know, hog wild and, and be aggressive as all hell and do whatever you want to do. And, uh, that's awesome. But considering like ranked matches, players of your skill level against you, I mean, that it, to you're me... going to run if, if anything that you can do in the game, other people are going to be able to do against you as well. And you have to like come to, I guess, terms with, I, 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 for whatever reason, I feel like people just don't don't respect the people that they're playing against. And if if they do something good, it's a fluke. But if you do something good, that you're really, really good. No, that's true. I agree with that 100%. Um, respecting players uh, going into the game, I think to me, like a lot of that, not a lot of that, but a part of that is the matchups. Because, mm -hmm. and I like Blitzcrank as an example there, because if you are... Lulu playing into Blitzcrank, you're going to play the, the even just the opening five minutes of the game far, far, far different than you would if you were, say, Alistar. Um, but either way, like you should assume that that Blitzcrank knows what he is doing. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't go in with the attitude that's like, I, I have the better matchup or I, I played Blitzcrank a thousand times. I know what I'm doing here, so it doesn't matter. It's like, assume that that Blitzcrank knows what he is doing until you have the evidence that suggests otherwise. Right. And that that doesn't necessarily mean you have to play super cautious or you have to play back or or whatever. Like, no, but if just, you get hit by a hook, it's like, okay, you're, you're that blitz crank, like that yeah. blitz crank knew what they were doing. I, I anticipated this and everything. And now I know going forward that this blitz crank is going to hit the difficult hooks or is going to read my actions and is going to be able to hit the hooks based off of that. Um, or if the blitz crank, you know, you know, you're, you're more, more or less standing idly, maybe moving back and forth a little bit, shoots one off and just like it runs right into a minion that could, you know, was four Teemos in front of it. Well, then you know going forward that that blitz crank's not really paying attention to minions. Unless he's and playing it's time for you mind to, games yeah and it's time for you to start yeah and then and then if, if the mind games are happening i guess you adjust but otherwise you can adjust your play style because now you have evidence suggesting well this blitz doesn't really know what's up they think picking blitz means they win and and the other piece of that too is if you're able to if you position well or you're expecting certain things to come or whatever and you can staunch people's ability to pull those things off you can get them to tilt if that you can get them to miss multiple ones in a row as well so you can kind of like flip that whole mind game thing on on them as well punch is riven one of those types of champions for you that might tilt me well a lot of things any of these things no oh, not at all no nah, nah, i'm not scared <laughs> of riven i can take on any riven doesn't matter any day any champion <laughs> it's not like yeah, me now. Never, is this what I've happens never on the top lane? a riven in my yeah. life yeah, is this what he happens used to be, to be such a modest uh, I, I hear carry it's... player, and all of a sudden he goes to top lane. And he's like, "I'm the shit." I hear it's not <laughs> hard to play against Riven if you never leave oh, no, your no, turret no. ever <laughs> and just hide there. Yeah, I, I recommend stabbing as much as possible against Riven, especially at <laughs> level two. Yeah, because she's very weak at level two, and she probably doesn't have ignite either. You just shut the <laughs> fuck up right now. <laughs> well, let's talk about shutting the fuck up because I've seen. A lot of people like to type when they're in a game, and I notice mm -hmm. a lot of people don't have the 
I don't know if it's dexterity or the foresight or whatever it may be to run and type. Like I, I just assume they just typing. Yeah, they just they just can't type quickly enough. I see a lot of people stop, stand there, and type. Right, like if I'm typing in a game, I'm moving somewhere, and I stop typing as as soon as I get it there. Like my sentence is out before I before I end it there. But I don't type that often in the game anymore either. So. So you guys have all played with me in solo or duo queue you know, at certain points along the way, and I don't know if you've paid close attention, but I almost always ping when I see a, an opponent going ward somewhere so that my jungler knows. Um, I guess unless it's with, I'm with Sean, because then I just tell him. Uh, but I like I, I I hate it because I have to run backwards in order to do this, and then that might mean giving up lane pressure or or I miss out on like a certain amount of experience along the way or anything, but it's fucking critical information to get out there for the jungler. And I just don't want to be standing around opening myself up to a skill shot in order to type, you know, a four letter word or six letter. Learn to type with right. one saying warded. You can type warded with one hand. The, I know, the but I'm still, I'm still scared. That's why and you, you need gotta, some like diction software that you just press a button and open you got to hit enter with the other hand. yeah i was about to say like you gotta you gotta make sure you hit enter because otherwise you've blown your w your ultimate and flash <laughs> really quickly you could actually razor if you have a razor mouse you can set up uh, hot uh, macros so they type shit for you automatically and puts it in the game I mean, I'd, I'd be I'm those pressing the wrong stuff. buttons and just like enemy our base but that that, I never really they're they're in there decision. sure it's minute two they're yeah. not in our base <laughs> like pings convey pretty much I mean, most of what you want to communicate with your team. I think the key is just not overusing them so people tune you out. But I, I, what, I can't even remember the last time I actually used text to talk to somebody who you know wasn't on voice chat with me. I suppose you would do that if you want to make specific shot calls like rotate to top right. or, or we need take to Baron. Take the you know what? Break. I, I want to know the amount of like uh, considering there, there's a lot of negative text that rolls around, I want to know the percentage of like actual helpful things that people type in comparison to just shit talking. That I feel like that'd be that'd be some interesting data. That'd be crazy to pull be, off. I to, wouldn't to be that crazy. The, the parsing would, for that. The parsing. No, I, yeah, I, how do you? No, how the do you parsing would be. Yeah. Between, that's, I mean, that's anything what, with although, the curse word in it. I mean, and the, flip, the flip side is that. You know, just that we're saying it's difficult to parse that type of stuff and everything. That also means that it's there are really strong odds that your message got misconveyed along the way. That's true. Like you yeah. might think you're saying something helpful or you're or saying funny. something and it's only playful or funny or something like that, and it just comes off as like a total dick statement to the the person receiving the message. Virtual I actually have an email. Say I have a really I have a pretty really big pretty big point on typing uh, in general because. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I did just switch lanes. I have had some games where I haven't been doing well, but this goes back to my support days as well. Um, if if I start messing up, if I if I screw up, if I die like accidentally, I will let people know in chat that I messed up. I'm not trying to like just I'm not trying to like to I don't know, sugarcoat it. I always try to do that because I have found that if somebody gets mad at me, saying something like that and owning up to it usually makes them less mad at me it, it disarms and them it disarms yeah. them a bunch yeah. and it you and i have seen games where i have fallen very far behind gotten shit on by my teammates but then said hey guys sorry i know i messed up we i think we can still win this like just just let's work together here and it, and it works great like if you assuming that you're not blaming somebody unnecessarily when it was probably your fault as we've been talking about uh, I have found it to be very effective. That said, I agree. don't like don't stop to to get into an argument. And if it if they just keep flaming, obviously you can just mute somebody. But I have found that reaching out is a lot more effective than I might have thought, given the uh, giving the kind of men or I shouldn't say that the labels that League of Legends gets when it comes to toxicity. And if you're not a great typer, you can just abbreviate that to my B. There you go. Yeah, done. Mission has come across. Use more abbreviations if you're a crappy typer. Yeah. The other thing, like, it's a real simple thing. If somebody does something good, like, honestly, just say, good job. And it can be, like, it's not necessarily, like, oh, nice gank and that type of stuff. It's something, it's especially when somebody does something that's really difficult to appreciate. You know, obviously, you have to be paying attention to that. But, like, somebody who does a really good job split pushing while the rest of the team is doing something else. And, you know, you might have a fight or something and, and you trade uh, trade kills during that and everything and, and walking away from that type of thing you don't like personally always feel good 
But if you can look around and see something that a teammate did and compliment that person, like that usually emboldens them and they're going to be like more willing to, to continue help to out, do good things. To continue to do good things and just to be there for you and to back you up going yeah. forward. Like yeah, as much I mean, as much okay. as you might want to be like angry at somebody, the worst case scenario is you have to finish this game with them and then remove them from your Skype because you've been on a podcast that, with them forever and and now you're angry at them. <laughs> yeah, it's good uh, that but you, don't the, you Skype the chat. <laughs> oh no! I mean, after the game, I just remove you from Skype. You're not my friend on Skype anymore. Right, uh, well, but like, you get really awkward you, packs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. But yeah, you could. There's not that much that you have to give to that person after that game's done. That's it. If you want, if you want to honor somebody, which I've completely just forgotten about until right now, because that hasn't really happened. In you forever. and everyone else. Yeah, exactly. I but got like, honored earlier today. I was like, "What? That's still in the game." Yeah, I have no problem with with being uh, incredibly conciliatory when it comes to these kind of things because it is one game and what's the worst that can happen? Honestly, admitting you fucked up and holding yourself accountable in game like that is a really good first step towards changing your mentality well, about a lot of these things. This is a life lesson no, in general. Yeah, I know. Like, I was about to yeah, say look, at, look at Adam. Life. Look at Adam just over like the past month and a half. It has been so much more enjoyable to play with him when he's not screaming, how the fuck did that hit me every a month fucking and a half. 12 and a half seconds? Fuck you, Sean. I'm going to start screaming at every fucking match now. I'm going to walk into Blitzbox and go, comparing... how the fuck did it hit me? Do you I think it's been more last time, 2016, 2017, Adam, to... Uh, 2013, 2013, 2014, Adam. Adam. I mean, like, it's, you're a totally question. different player. Yeah, it's, that's, you're a totally that, different person. That's because you take like you take things you learn when you do a podcast for 400 episodes, and you put them toward your your life. Where you, I used to I used to be an asshole league player, and I stopped doing that as soon as I started playing with Adam all the time because I didn't want to be. <laughs> oh God damn, you guys are fucking assholes, man! I'm removing every single one of you from Skype. <laughs> oh man! Uh, no, th- th- I was bringing this topic up originally because I know that in the past we have told people to type to your teammates or help guide the game in one form or the other whether it be through pings or typing but i just don't want people to take that too far um it reminds me of somebody i had spoke to i told them to be more vocal in a game because you're doing well so be vocal to your team but he took that to let's talk to everybody and he spent more time oh typing than chatting oh stop dying that was bad yes yes he spent more time chatting than he did playing the actual game and i was like well you took that a little too far that's about just finding the right balance, and uh, maybe he came in a little overzealous with that. But right. well, I, hey, so something I something I've I've also seen with that is uh, it's pretty clear. Like you can see if your opponent types. Like let's flip the switch on this with looking at your opponent's typing. Stop, I have seen situations where like I'll I'll win a trade early on, like in lane, and then I'll see them just stop, not in range for me to hit them, but like stop and clearly type to their team, which might mean like, <laughs> hey, we should gank soon. And you can clearly say like, hey, jungler. Uh, I bet there's going to be a gank here in a little bit because he just typed to Do you have all chat team. on or off? I have it on, but I mean, like, it oh, was okay. like a a clear typing to their team, not not to not to everybody. No, I just because if you have it off, you know, it might mean they're talking to you. And I turn oh. it off. I just like I know that the 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 shit talking and that type of stuff goes goes going on, whether it's the opponent shit talking me or just the fighting between the two, like someone else on my team and, and the opponent like that will bother me um, or just go, you know, outright tilt me and everything. I can't handle it. So I just turn it off and it makes my life better. Yeah. Yeah. You can pay attention to that. It's, it's a really small thing to notice, but it's kind of obvious when it happens. Cause by the time you've hit like 30, almost no one's standing still at any point at, at least the same not time for, though how much like does that time. how much does that embolden you to continue great. doing whatever you're doing that's great i love it i love it too oh yeah the My, best thing you, the best thing you can do to your opponent is cause a bunch of infighting in the keep, team i keep all chat on that way if i kill somebody and they start yelling at me from the other team <laughs> it, i it doesn't matter if i lose the game i won in my heart it, it's so weird. I have no difficulty shrugging it off when the rest of my team is yelling at me or something. But like the moment I see all that red text start flying up. And again, it's wet. it doesn't matter if it's coming at me or it's fighting going on between someone else in my team and opponents or whatever. It, like somebody on the opponent team bitching about something else. It just like it, it bothers me. Like yeah, it. I just don't want to see it. I don't want to deal with any of that. Dude, my favorite thing it. to do now is to 
make a really bad play and then ping myself with the question mark before my, before the, before my team can do it. I, I love it to is, ping myself with the funny. question mark. Like, I'll die, and I'll just go ping. And then, and then no one else can make fun of me because I already made fun of myself. Or they'll just by the ping way, too. By the way, can this stop not doing be your that, favorite everyone? thing? Stop, stop pinging the question mark on people, everyone, because you are, like, reducing the usefulness of that ping. <laughs> no, that's what that ping uh, means. And, and it's a that's really important... That is. Like, it's a really important one, and it communicates useful information, but when you just ping somebody screwing up, like, you are you are causing everybody else on your team to to pay less attention to it's, that It's one. worse than the ellipse, or the why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? That's why I like that. That was a terrible one. That's why I just do it to... If, if I'm in a game with somebody that's doing it to people, I just do it to myself now. Ping. All right, there you go. I've, I've taken your power away from you. So, you guys... on, I, I was gonna I was going to speak to the opposite effect of being too vocal... That is not saying anything, which which goes into which is part of something that's known as autopilot mode, which is where you're is too afraid. You're too afraid to make plays. You're too afraid to make calls. Most of the time, this is a, as a result of trying not to tilt too hard because you're like on a series of losses, right? If you're like, at that, you know what? Point, I'm not tilting. I'm just going to join this game and play super safe, and I'm going to let my teammates carry me, and I'm not going to call out that the enemy jungler is ganking because hopefully my Dude. jungler sees it and God, so I, I don't i don't know what dom's doing yeah, totally it got broken. so close i almost spilled everywhere and instead it just to, like it topped out so nicely well anyways i was just saying that that was that is an opposite trend that you want to avoid at all costs because you do want to be making that useful communication but you know. if you're at that point though you probably shouldn't be queued up for that game no no it's yeah, it, it, it's a uh, crap. I can't think of the word. Where do um, you guys stand on, like, it, on people who just don't actually say anything in game, like positive, negative, like never, they mostly. Never. No, ping. I know. I know you. I know you are 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 pretty against. You know, you don't say a whole lot in chat, and I also don't say a whole lot in chat. That's the big thing I'm trying to work on this season is being a bit more proactive because I just I'm so vocal. Just yeah, use I know your information. But like, I, how do you guys feel about? Okay, but how do you feel about your teammates when they're not saying a whole lot? It depends. If they're the silent assassin that's murdering everything, it's great. They may as well be the MVP of the game at that point. But sure. if they're the person who's completely silent and they're just eating plates of shit, they're just farming. It's okay. It's uh, the mid laner. It's the mid yeah. lane assassin who tried to make a good roam uh, and, and something backfired. I don't care. I'd rather just people just I mean, didn't talk. Yeah, the important, you know, the important thing if you're if you're not boat. if you're not going to talk, the important question then is, do they listen? And that and that can easily be found by like saying, "Hey, we should do this," not by and asking if, why. And if they and if they and if they go and just push a lane instead, you know that they're it's not they're not going to be a very helpful person. Well, that's true. But, I mean, yeah, I, I've definitely had rare moments of typing and then like nobody responded. Period. But, I expect some sort of communication and on my way ping at the very least, right? If someone's ganking yeah, my lane, sure. if someone just shows up and like, oh, uh, my oh. mid laner's here, where the hell did he come from? Oh, those then... people deserve a special place in hell. Man, that's uh, you, that's rough. No, Sean. you 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 should ping. You should ping if you're coming. Go, you ping right see, now. I I ping right now. You're not even in game. Ping right no, now. No, you though. ping right now. But see, I'm I hate the people. Podcast. I hate the people who are who ping that they're on their way, but they they mean they're that. Not, mean like I'm I'm, I'm on the way far. in two minutes. It's like that. That's right. that I'm is on the way from base useless to me i don't want to know that you're on your way after you clear blue buff i want to know that you're on your way like when you're en route so that i can start preparing everything but if you're clearing like if you're going to take a pit stop to fucking look at gromp and and maybe you know like yeah. jerk off with it or something like that like i i, I have no interest in what you're uh what you're doing i, right I now. will i will just go though, fast in the beginning just like over the past two seasons i i've i don't notice that many quiet that people necessarily in games and part of that's because you know playing a lot of flex or playing with people that you know like there's way less of that at least because i'm playing with you guys or i'm playing with other people and in a group all the time so which really maybe, surprises like, me because you never shut up when you play a game so it's i, I never shut up ever <laughs> the only I person love I, play, I love playing with you because you're always talking uh and and 
I've gotten a lot better at like picking up when you're telling me useful information and when you're just, you just describing you what is going on in your lane. Yeah. No, I like I know, but I, I figured out when to to listen when not. Otherwise, I like I I always know what's going on you where you are. Translated so. my stream of no, dude. I've got Shod, like a quarter to a third of the map. If like, Shod just, leaves and we have like a listener playing with us or something, and then we just keep playing a game, it's like you can just hear crickets. Like no one else is talking. More quiet. It just got really awkward and quiet. I, I can't. It's, I cannot. Shod just verbally. Just it's just a trash can of verbal diarrhea that just fucking. I, no, I I, I have a stream of consciousness and I talk <laughs> the entire time because I it's so uncomfortable to me if you're playing with people or doing anything with people and it gets quiet. I hate it. <laughs> I, I I need I need people to talk and if people aren't gonna talk, I'll just do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, like you, I love that you comment like, and, and there are a lot of helpful things you say in terms of giving us information, but the the classic I'm beat. Happens <laughs> so often yep. and is so often incorrect too because yep. then you'll get away. I live majority of the time. So, yeah, you so, know, I haven't heard the shot I'm fine in a while. I've, uh, I've heard the I beat. Yes, thank goodness. That is That was mm -hmm. the most tilting thing. It's the worst one to hear. Because I always fucked in that case. Yeah. I'm but, fine. And, and uh, you want to talk, talk about don't. like overconfidence? Every time I said that, I was like, oh, there's nobody who can kill me. And then as soon as it happens, I just instantly die. <laughs> how did, how did like, they kill me? How did I die? Yeah. Uh, so, well, no, it, it'll be like, oh, like, be careful. We don't know where songs are. Oh, I'm fine. And then they come and kill it's usually, ass. It's usually, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then he dies. Wow, that person's fed as fuck. <laughs> I should probably press tab. Oh. Yeah. Then meanwhile, yeah. like, Punch and I played a whole bunch, uh, like, towards the second half of last season and everything. There would be 15-minute periods. And we were streaming. There'd be 15-minute periods where not a single one of us was saying a goddamn thing. Oh, you guys are the worst. And well, Punch doesn't play music when he streams. So. When you play on opposite ends of the map, sometimes I would just be saying, okay, so Dom, how's it going in bot lane? <laughs> oh, how's it's going, it's going. going you know, uh, I got hit by this hook, but then I hit him later. That's cool, that's cool. I'm just, you know, just farming <laughs> up here on top. Yep. No, it's usually like like the the thirteen to to twenty seven minute period where laning is over, but you and I are somehow not in the same area of of the map. So so the communication we're throwing around is not happening because it's not usually helpful to one or the other. Right, I'm mostly communicating with everyone that's not in bot lane. But we're point, mostly saying which means things. Punch and I do not put on an entertaining stream. Well, that's great. I'll remember that for the future. I learned. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I learned so much. Right well, in the past. I think that four will. Minutes conclude the mentality portion of the podcast because the last 10 minutes <laughs> just gone off the rails off the rails hey you know what, what i've had fun I've, I've had fun actually uh, i had that last little niche. bit i like this mm. actually if, if you wanted to go sure. a little bit further Please. okay it's it's uh, it's, it's a us. different 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 style of mentality because it's something that i don't do personally but uh probably want to start and that's uh taking stock of the game a little bit more after champ select ends but before the game gets going like kind of not necessarily knowing all your knowing your matchup, but like, hey, I am the tank this game. And look, there's a bunch of AD on their team. Wait, I should probably pay attention wait. to this and know that that uh, bump frozen heart up my my buy order because there's a bunch of attack speed people. You're, so uh, wait, you're saying that if your first pick, you don't just pick your champion and then get up take and take a shit. Yeah, for. Oh, well, no, that's minutes. fine. As long as you take a dump and get back before the game loads and then you have some time to think about it. Or what you do is you go take that shit, you call Adam and ask, hey, what what were the rest of the picks? <laughs> and then he me. can tell you, you can Text think about it while you're on the, on the toilet. Yeah. So, Man, I would love me. for... Don't call me. I'm going to stare at my phone as it's ringing. Like, <laughs> just tell, why aren't you texting me? <laughs> Seriously, why the fuck are you calling me? Because when we, when we go to PAX, Mitch is going to call me, but like, I'm at the apartment. I'm just going to look at my phone and go, the fuck? What if what is he trying to well, do? What is this the noise plane. my phone is making? Plane, so that's going to be even more, even weirder for me to try to call then. <laughs> you know, it'd be better if if this situation happened, but he has Skype on his phone and he just sends you a Skype message of what the picks are. <laughs> it'd be better if he sent me a screenshot of him removing me from Skype from his phone. <laughs> that, yeah, that would be that would be that good too. Uh, good. Well, that went off the rails quick. Thanks, thanks, guys. <laughs> You're welcome. No, I, I I get what you're saying though, and I I think that's definitely that's definitely a helpful thing. Is, uh, I mean, it would probably help refocus you on exactly what you need to do and like what your goals are for the game, knowing exactly what the enemy are, what your team is, what your role within your team is going to be, whether or not you're going to get the, you know, build more offensively, defensively, whatever for whatever reason. Um, it, it's, it's been it's surprising the number of times that I don't pay attention to basic information on the loading screen. 
like I would die at level two in top lane because the enemy t- the enemy top laner had ignite. Oh yeah, like, what, that guy didn't have teleport. Yeah, there's That's, there's that. Yeah, I, I, there's know. been a number of times where I don't I miss out on on summoners, but also like the level one that you can pay attention to. Like usually, what I found is we'll be like t- thirty seconds into the game and spreading out before we're like, wait, do we have a good level one? Or do they? Should we should we have maybe thought about we this invade a with bit? this? We shouldn't be invading yeah. with this. Yeah. I try to type out really unusual things with respect to summoners. Like if if the support has ignite instead of exhaust, I try to tell the team because um, my like the AD carry needs to know that, and you know, <laughs> yeah, maybe they were paying attention, that. but but you know better safe than sorry, right? What's the worst that happened? I'm I'm being repetitive. There's nothing wrong, wrong with that. That's so much better than than, than being having, surprised than, later. Yeah, being surprised. Um, or I mean, I don't say it with top lane. If top lane took like heal or something, I'd be like, hey, hey, watch out for the heal. Or if there was like double exhaust on the team and we had, you know, well, what happened yesterday or something when, when, run out of mid. Who, who, who was it Talon that ran exhaust? Who ran exhaust against me? Well, top laners We're, tend to run exhaust. I run ignite. It was, it was gangplank. gangplank. Yeah, it was me versus gangplank. And I was just like, gangplank, gangplank went exhaust against me. I'm like, oh no, I can't just level three all in him now. <laughs> So depressing. That most gangplanks run exhaust. Just, I don't see it. Just so you know, Sean. I have yet. I barely see it. I usually uh, see like ignite or teleport. No, most run exhaust now because I, it just I don't, makes the trades easier. It's the same I've thing when you play Yasuo. Time. You run exhaust. Well, I, I I know that, but I I play Yasuo. Do you, Sean? I was playing Yasuo for a while. I haven't picked him up in like a month and a half. I'm gonna be so bad if I make you guys. You play. haven't played him since 2016. That's not true. Can you play Yasuo for me tonight? Wait, that might be true. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that might be true. And we're talking like October or November. Yeah, not, I, I mean, not like it much. wasn't like it wasn't like December 31st or some shit. We're talking. I mean, like it's been a minute. Yeah. Because I've been playing with you sometimes, and I haven't picked Alistar in games with you. Because you're not playing. Yasuo. I feel like I've learned so much this episode about everything, about myself, about you guys. That's great, Sean. I feel like it's gone completely off the rails. Too. It has. It 100% it is. has. We're pretty good at that. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. That one's on me. Do you want to do guys. listener questions or, or make up more bullshit? or Humorously about the listener questions, we need Maureen on for three of the four. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, a lot, I think a lot of them were holdovers for, from when he when Todd first showed up. The final, the final okay one can be answered by the Garen Champions Like podcast episode. Hey, yes, he's sure trying can. out a new one. He is what trying is out a new uh, one. Frozen, frozen mallet, Garen. The best build. one. Yes, frozen mallet, tilted at him. He was so he was tilted. so excited to talk about that too. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's not going to happen. I'm looking forward to that episode. <laughs> <laughs> when makes a public apology. It's not, public yeah, apology. Yeah, it's, to the that said so, with such a definitive like air to it, <laughs> I I almost believed it for a second. <laughs> well, no. So so something that you guys, something that you listeners don't see on the back end is we, uh, whenever we cough or or do something stupid like I don't know, almost spill our beer, uh, we we will type in our chat to like, hey, Lanceford, cut out these little parts. Uh, I bet that Adam will probably just take take note of when Marine starts talking about the frozen mouth <laughs> build and just say cut out his entire audio from this. <laughs> from this that song. would be great. No, it's just that we have a top lane win to build Garen. Uh, we actually, Asher wrote in, he asked about playing GP Fiora. Dara says he does really good, but he's really bad at Maokai or Poppy. What should I do? We talked about that on the episode of the top lane I episode. I feel like, I mean, Punch is a top laner. Sean plays a lot of top lane. Adam, you I used to play top lane. No, no, like, it's, it's, we, a lot we of actually answered, answered that question on the top lane episode. Oh, okay. Yeah. I also like that you went with when to build Garen as opposed to what's the Garen build you prefer, which was so like the words were so out of order and a lot of them were wrong. No, I I like that. I like <laughs> everything about that. Well, you know, I, I think this top podcast has gone so off the fucking rails. I don't know. I kind of like you this, say uh, as you just like start first one by Luke. Luke. <sighs> All right. You know yeah, what? Adam, we'll, this we'll is do perfect it. for you. No, nah, I don't like it. Luke writes. <laughs> I made ADC and play a lot of games, but I've never gotten on a silver one and spent most of my time in mid-silver. With the amount I play, I know a lot of my struggles are on me. Lately, however, I cannot ever seem to secure any kills in laning phase. It's not that anyone is being a dick and stealing. It's just that when my jungler, support, and I are all hammering on a dude, someone else always gets the last tick of damage. Is there something I should mechanically work on to ensure I get the last hit so that I can snowball, or have I just been hitting some bad luck in skirmishes? If, if at any point... 
Okay, there, there's a couple times when, like, a kill is so already secured that your teammate should be letting you get it. But if you were, like, waiting, like, I, hey, I'm going to hold off on this auto attack until I know it's about to no. be ready. Like, that's, I, that pains me so much, no. unless it is so secured. Unless there is no doubt that that kill is happening, that's there is no point that. you should be, like, waiting on it. Because I, I was going to say you, could, you should push all your stuff into it. But if there's, like, three, if, if there's three of you gangbanging a dude in a bush and he can't get out, you can actually hold that last auto attack off to get that kill. But again, you also probably get arrested. Do you, do you not, not, why, why would you do you not like, like assists? Like, this is an easy yeah, way for people to not die and to not get assists. Right. If, by holding so off. much can go wrong if you if you try to give the kill to somebody. I've seen it countless times. Yeah. It, is such a, it is such a stupid strategy. Just get the kill. Like, who cares if you get the assist or not? Just secure that kill. I don't if, care if the support gets it. I don't give a fuck. If, if I'm playing 80 in the bottom and working the kill, I don't care. No, the guy see, died. Like I do care. care. support that's very I low. I care, too. I it's care, so too. To give it to the 80 carry, I care like, because it, Dom has a... He's, I don't know how many fucking times in the last three months that i played with Dom that he's fucking stole a goddamn kill from me. This oh, no, motherfucker I apologize every time. will steal like, 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 two like, kills I'm a goddamn sorry, game. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. He gets a little overzealous and he starts yeah. slinging his fucking spells from his hands and shit. I'm like, I got this. <laughs> Support has secured the kill. It, it's um not excusable when I'm playing with you because we play all the time and I really should just uh, ease off the gas there. In solo queue, if I even have like a, a an iota of doubt about the AD carry being able to get that kill, I'm just going to take it because the last thing I want is is the opponent to get out of there for us to lose out on the kill and assist gold and then us to, to lose out on a window of opportunity to take an objective or something else um, because they have, you know, we have a power play. They have fewer people on the map. Um, so if I, if I have even an iota of doubt, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to take the kill and not even fucking worry about, it. I'll apologize in chat and everything. Sorry if, if, if it was really an issue, but I, I'm not going to feel bad about it. When I do it with you, I do feel bad about it because I'm not trying to do that. And there's sometimes where it's like, oh, hey, congratulations. You lost a kill to Alistar's trample ability. Like that's, that's not really on me. There's literally nothing I could have done there. Don't worry yeah, about it, Luke. You need to attack better. They're dead. It's all that matters, Luke. Just keep your farm up. Keep your chin up. Yeah, keep I that mean, farm up. Maybe the better question is like, what are you doing if you're if you're in silver? What are you doing after you get these kills? Like, is that, if everybody's really low and has to to go back? Okay, well that's one story and everything. But if like you just remove somebody from the map, like fucking turn that into something else for your team: a tower, a dragon, a rift herald, if that's still in the game. Um, go throw wards in the enemy jungle so you know what's going to be happening. Like, there's stuff that you can do because you remove somebody else from the map. There's... Also, junglers getting early kills isn't bad. They get to pressure the whole map. There's a lot That's of right. things you can do as an AD carry main in silver to carry the game, and that generally goes with understanding when to trade in lane. Like I bet you, there's a whole lot more to the reason you're not getting out of silver one than the fact that you're not getting kills. It's probably likely that you don't know how to. You really don't have an understanding of why or when you should be trading. You understand that you should be trading, right? You understand that you should be CSing and trading, but you understand when and why I am doing it and what I get out of it if I uh, if I do it successfully. Like, you know, th there's a bunch of little mechanical pieces to playing bottom lane where you under you start to understand when skills have been used and cooldowns of abilities and understanding when to be aggressive because certain summoner spells have been blown and whatnot like you, you when you have more minions on your side yeah mm -hmm. exactly exactly there's a, it, all these little yep. things compound to push you into gold five right like that you can you can use all these pushes there's also the fact that playing bottom lane is any carry you can also guide your lane partner and the juggler to start taking dragons more often you can you can start roaming up if you push somebody in to start taking mid lane a lot of times if i'm playing i'll just start roaming mid lane and get a couple pot shots on the mid tower and then walk back by if i don't have any reason to be in my base right and, and i know that they're trying to stall like or or i'll walk in and try to help ward with the the support like there's just a lot of little pieces that you can start doing as playing the mid lane that is easier to understand if he, one somebody shows you and two if you go back and watch a replay and realize that i could have been here doing this at the certain point if i would have paid attention to this or that piece so that's uh that's how you get out of you that's know, how you get a silver one there you go luke you know based on the conversation we had last week with uh jiwoo is that his name? Uh, I would tell anybody who is like not sure about their like main role or or 
you know, just like just getting into the game or any of that type of stuff, like just fucking start in mid lane. Yes, it's the most contested role and everything. You learn so much from that lane. And if nothing else, you, you learn to. you learn that the dynamic of that lane does not work for you. And you can then branch out and figure out one of the better areas for it and everything. But you will learn just so much about the game by playing mid. And your teammates will hate you for it so much for a very short amount of time until you figure it out. You'll learn how to mute everybody. Hey, what are the odds you're going to see most of those assholes uh, again? Ever again? Never. Never. So you right. you do you. Well, that's all I got. That's all I got, boys. That's it. We got we got, we got ten. We got ten minutes to go blaze it now. We got. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have a patch to talk about on Wednesday. Who's excited for that? No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Chura's excited. Punch isn't going to be there. He's never there on Wednesdays now. I like patches. Well, Sean probably won't be there. He'll end up making some excuse about how he's working all day and he had to work out and had to fucking go to the gym and do. And then he had to go jerk it off in the Wendy's parking lot. I don't yep, know. yep. Uh, I mm -hmm. jerk off in the Wendy's parking lot all the time. How did you know? Are That's you Wednesday well, me, sir? You're texting me. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, ooh, that got a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, better Wendy's than a Hardee's. Do they even have Hardee's it? In, up there, Sean? I think the last Hardee's I saw was in Dayton, so no. Not that <laughs> yeah. I, know of. I haven't seen a Hardee's in a long time. Your life is probably better for it. Well, that's the, this is the biggest note and highest note to leave <laughs> yeah, the podcast. This got weird. This got really weird. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I hope you're all uncomfortable, too. You're that not easy to discomfort, either. Oh. Thank you all for listening to the Trinity Force podcast. I hope you enjoyed episode number 420. We talk about <laughs> mentality. This is going to be the best one that I'm ever going to send to Weldon. I'm just going to tell uh, Lancifer to cut. Avoid that. the last three <laughs> minutes. Drop off. Uh, just just minute, drop minute it there. somewhere before we start talking about jerking it in a Wendy's parking lot. Hey, you know what? You brought that up. So, <sighs> like, that didn't need to be a part of this. I... Uh... Well, it's a good thing that I have video editing software. All right, guys. Know, right? We will see you all on Wednesday <laughs> with the new latest patch. See you. See you, guys. See ya.